In this video, I'm going to help you figure out when you're ovulating without having to buy any expensive ovulation kits. Hi everyone, my name is Susan and this is the Oslims. So when you first start on your trying to conceive journey, the first thing that you're gonna realize is that it's very important to figure out when you ovulate. During each menstrual cycle, you have a very short period of time in which your egg can actually be fertilized. Um, so once the egg is released from one of your ovaries, it, the egg will survive for about 12 to 24 hours before it starts breaking down. And so, let's say that the average cycle is about 28 days long. So within a 28 day long period, you have about 12 to 24 hours in which uh, your egg can actually be fertilized. So you can start to see why timing is really important and more specifically figuring out when you actually ovulate is extremely important when you're trying to get pregnant. So there are tons of like expensive and not so expensive ovulation kits and tests and things. You can go to your doctor to figure out how to, uh, to actually test for ovulation. But if you're not quite ready to say, get those tests done or to spend the money on those ovulation kits, don't worry because I have you covered. Um, in this video, I'm going to share with you 11 different ways that different physical symptoms that you can um, pay attention to your body and your body will be able to tell you when you're actually ovulating. So symptom number one that you may be ovulating is an increase in your sex drive. So as you get closer to um, ovulating, you get an increase in estrogen and an increase in luteinizing hormone. Um, when those hormones increase, more specifically estrogen, when estrogen increases, it can give you a boost in your libido as well. And also on the other hand, after you ovulate, then progesterone will start to increase. Um, and when progesterone increases, it can actually reduce your sex drive. So this thing with progesterone is actually kind of interesting because it might explain why some women feel like they have a really low sex drive when they're on birth control pills, uh, more specifically birth control pills that contain progesterone. Symptom number two that you may be ovulating is that your skin may appear more clear um, and more radiant. So have you ever noticed that during your period or right before your period, your skin sort of breaks out? And then it seems like mid-cycle somewhere, your skin looks a lot better than it does for the rest of the cycle. Um, this is all due to hormones again. So as estrogen increases closer to the time of your ovulation, estrogen apparently does all this amazing stuff for us. Um, one of which is makes our skin like brighter, more clear, more radiant. Symptom number three that you may be ovulating is a uh, a boost in your mood. You have a better mood during this time of the cycle. Uh, this again is because of estrogen. So some a crazy thing that estrogen can do is actually increase the amount of serotonin in your body as well as increase the amount of serotonin receptors in your brain. So another interesting one in this sort of helping us get pregnant way is that number four sign symptom that you may be ovulating is a heightened sense of smell. So studies have been done on this and apparently women have a higher, a heightened sense of smell when they're ovulating, but more specifically uh, smelling male pheromones. So maybe this is another way of like sniffing out a potential mate and helping you to become pregnant. So these first four symptoms are kind of like fun, very positive symptoms to look forward to, but the next symptoms that I'm gonna tell you are not so much. Symptom number five that you may be ovulating is breast tenderness. Um, this is more for women who have low progesterone levels. You might find that your breasts are more tender right when you ovulate as well as after your cycle when after you ovulate. Symptom number six is ovulation cramps. And this only happens in about 20% of women. Um, and it doesn't happen all of the time for those women that it does happen to. It only happens like occasionally. So you, there's a good chance that this won't even happen for you. But 
um, the possibility is there. So ovulation cramps are just a little bit of cramping or pain on either side of your pelvis. And so that pain is coming from whichever ovary is releasing the egg that month, could be the left or the right. And that pain is just coming from the actual rupturing of the follicle, of the ovarian follicle to release the egg. Symptom number seven that you may be ovulating is abdominal bloating. And this happens um, with the surge in luteinizing hormone that happens right before you ovulate. And this might not happen, might could happen for you, maybe not. Um, but the surge in that hormone can possibly cause water retention, which can possibly make you feel like you have abdominal bloating. Symptom number eight that you may be ovulating is a little bit of spotting. So this will happen mid-cycle spotting, so obviously not when you're supposed to get your period. Um, this may happen, not very likely, but it's a symptom that some people may have. And it happens um, because of hormones, so your estrogen increases, but it will happen right at the time of ovulation before your progesterone starts to increase because your progesterone increases after ovulation. Um, so basically what's happening is your estrogen has increased, which is um, growing your uterine lining, um, but the progesterone is what thickens your uterine lining. So because your progesterone has not risen yet, then the uterine lining has not thickened. So there could be a little bit of spotting basically. Um, so I kind of just want to interject here. Uh, if you're not really sure what I'm talking about with all this hormonal stuff like estrogen, luteinizing hormone and progesterone, I do have a blog that I write and it can explain all of this hormonal changes that your body goes through during every single cycle that you have. Um, so I'm going to put a link down below to maybe a specific article in my blog that will talk more about that. And yeah, and you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about here. Symptom number nine that you may be ovulating is a swollen lymph node. Um, so this actually happens in about 70% of women. So it's actually pretty common, but it's such a tiny little swelling that it's hard to notice. So you've probably never even been aware of it before. Um, so lymph nodes are little glands that are all throughout your body, but there are lymph nodes um, kind of right where you would imagine your ovaries might be on the left and right side of your pelvis. So what may happen with the lymph node swelling is that whatever side, whichever ovary your egg has released from that month, um, your lymph node may swell up only to the size of about a pea. So if you want to become more aware of this symptom, you'll kind of have to test out and feel in that area throughout your cycle so that you can feel what it feels like on a non-ovulation period. Um, so then when you actually do feel a little pea-sized bump there, you know that that could be signaling that, you're, that you've just ovulated. Symptom number 10 that you may be ovulating is changes in your cervical mucus. So I have written an entire blog post on this topic as well. Um, so your cervical mucus will change with your homo hormones throughout the entire month, but the type of mucus or fluid that you are looking for to indicate that you're ovulating is what they call egg white cer cervical mucus, which is just the consistency of egg white. So it's stretchy, it's like very uh, lubricated, um, and that's the kind of that's the kind of cervical mucus that is really going to support sperm making its way up into your uterus and up into the fallopian tubes. So if you want to learn more about that in more detail and how to check your cervical mucus and all of that, everything you need to know about that topic, please check out my blog. I will also post a link for that article below. Um, number 10 that you may be ovulating is change in your cervix's position in your body. This is another article that I have written, so I'll post the link for that as well. Um, but basically what happens is when you ovulate, your cervix rises and it also softens. So usually it feels like more firm because it is tightly closed and it doesn't want to allow anything into your uterus. But when you ovulate, it obviously wants the opposite. It wants sperm to come 
inside of you so it will soften up, open up, and it will get higher. Um, so check out my article, my blog article, if you want to learn more about that. Um, both of these topics or any of these topics, if you would rather me just make a video because that's just an easier sort of media for you to intake, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to have tons of blog posts on all of these topics, on every single topic that has to do with trying to conceive. So check out my blog or let me know if there is something you'd want me to make a video about. So those are my 11 physical symptoms that you can pay attention to in your own body to help you discover when you may be ovulating. As you can tell, a lot of these symptoms are your body's way of supporting you and trying to get pregnant by increasing your sex drive and your mood and opening up your cervix and creating this wonderful cervical mucus that is helping the sperm uh, make its way up to get you pregnant. So your body is really trying to support you, like your body has got this. Um, but if you feel like you, you are ready to take that next step to buy an ovulation kit or to do something else just to help you along the way, um, definitely check out my blog. As I said, I have a ton of articles. I have a list of all of the different ovulation kits and tests and everything that you can do. So all of the links are gonna be down below. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. As I said before, if you have questions, let me know so I can support you on this journey as well. And I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.